This conference will now be recorded. Perfect. So the conference is now going to be recorded, as you would have heard. Um, if you keep your cameras off for us, we won't see you in that recording. And I just want to formally welcome uh, Jeff Hopkins to present to you guys tonight. Um, and after that, G will will jump on as well. But um, again, if you've got any questions in the chat on the side, there's a perfect place to put it. And um, apart from that, you won't be seeing, or hopefully won't be seeing my face again in case something goes wrong, uh, unless something goes wrong. So over to you, uh, Jeff. Thank you very much. Great, thanks, Tim. Um, first of all, uh, thanks for having me tonight. I um, uh, hope everyone's uh, everyone's keeping well, keeping sane. Um, I just think uh, tonight's uh, it's most probably good timing, just as we start to. Uh, I know for us, we're starting to to come out of lockdown and uh, starting to return to training. That um, we get to uh, spend a bit of time together and have a little bit of a chat, um, uh, specifically on uh, female female football. Um, obviously, I enjoy my uh, interactions with uh, uh, with the Latrobe Valley. I, I lived down there for for a fair few years and coached coached down at Falcons for uh, for a number of years as well. Um, so obviously, I'll, I'll know a few people online tonight um, personally. Uh, just say hello to you all, and uh, those that you don't don't know me, um, I've uh, I've been the W League head coach here at Melbourne Victory for uh, four seasons now and um, really enjoying my job and uh, obviously with um, just with the way things have happened over the last uh, eight weeks there's going to be a, a number of um, uh, tough months ahead for us and uh, and obviously without knowing what next season is going to look like it's going to be a uh, it's going to be quite challenging for us. So uh, uh, looking forward to the challenge and uh, I'm obviously looking forward to talking to everyone tonight. Um, I want to try and make this as interactive as possible. So like Tim said, if uh, if you've got any questions, um, just fire them through in the, in, the chat, uh, in the chat box and I'll try and answer them as they come through. What I'll most probably do is at the end of each, each slide or each couple of slides, I'll... Uh, I'll stop. I'll check the chat box, and if there's any questions, I'll I'll answer them straight away. Um, but like I said, it's a it's a great opportunity for me to talk to you now. Uh, I've put together a, a presentation, um, but I'm aware that um, hopefully that uh, you'll you'll guide me and steer me in the direction that you want, because this is this is uh, obviously about you guys and uh, just me trying to share with you as much as I possibly can. So, um, and any questions are a good question to just fire, fire them away. Um, Cause I guess the big thing is that um, uh, we, we need to, as coaches of, of female, female footballers, uh, uh, try and create an atmosphere and an environment um, that uh, is as appealing as possible to try and grow participation levels as much as we can, and I know, uh, I know, um, it's 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 a very difficult uh, occasion at the moment uh, with what's been going on. So, um, if we can work as close as we can together and then use as many strategies as we possibly can, then uh, um, the game and the and and the girls will uh, will be the ones that, uh, that gain from it. Uh, uh, so hopefully over the next 30 or 40 minutes, um, I can just share with you a few things that you might be able to use over over the next uh, over the next 12 months or so to that, that might come in handy and might help you. Um, I've been coaching women and girls for 15 years now. Um, I started up in up in Queensland with the Queensland Academy of Sport, and, and to be honest, I got into it um, by accident. Um, and like it's uh, it's been at times pretty challenging, uh, at times pretty confronting, um, exciting. Um, it's given me great opportunities, and uh, I've I've actually uh, made some great friendships in the game with uh, with players, with coaches. Um, I say uh, I've learned a huge amount um, in this time. Uh, coming from coaching um, senior men in the uh, in the NSL to uh, 
to junior to junior girls in the uh, in the Queensland League up there was uh, was definitely a, a real uh, change of culture for me. And I say at times was was quite confronting. Uh, at times, uh, most probably for the first time in my coaching uh, career, I was uh, I was being um, questioned. Uh, why are we doing this? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, you know, normally with the boys, it's uh, it's kind of listen, listen, and they do. Uh, but with the girls, it's more uh, listen and then question, and it's. Uh, uh, that was uh, that was the first time I'd uh, I'd kind of had that that, that amount of questioning, and it's uh, I say at times it's a little bit confronting. But uh, um, once you learn to uh, to live with that and start um, giving the giving the players the the answers to to why we're doing it, then uh, I think female players are very very coachable, and most probably as coachable more coachable than, than boys. Um, like I said, I've had some exciting times as well. The women's game has given me the opportunity to uh, to coach at the right at the top level. I've I've been uh, I've been able to work with the Matildas and some some great players there. Um, I've been able to see grand finals in the uh, in the um, in the in the W League and and seen some great young players progress through and uh, realise their dreams. So it's been uh, it's really been fantastic for me. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's get moving. Um, just bear with me. I guess the first thing is uh, from my my outlook on the game and uh, the, the the psychology the psychology of coaching is is difficult. It's it's a diff difficult thing whether you're coaching boys or girls, male or female, um, and it's about getting the best as a coach, getting the best out of every player and for the players, you know, making the most uh, out of their, um, make the most out of them and get them getting the most out of uh, out of the game. So, you know, um, it's it's never easy. Um, and my starting point really is, a, is an approach based on similarities rather than differences. Um, you know, I've, I've found in my experience that coaching males and females they work just as hard as each other they can be as aggressive males and females can be as aggressive as 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 each other they can be ruthless uh, they boys and girls they they want to compete they want to win um, and uh that's probably uh it's it's most probably not what they're all about it's it's just how how you coach them and how you how you actually get get these things uh out, out of these players um has, it has a really huge um impact on the uh, on the motivation and the success of your team how, how you do things yeah. so um you know i think um the way that you the way that you coach has got to be as i've found has got to be different to uh it's got to be different when you're coaching girls to uh, to coaching boys, um, but what you coach uh, and the motivation behind them um, is is pretty similar. And uh, I must probably put it into uh, most probably six areas that I uh, that I want to talk about tonight. Um, all all pretty important um, and all and all and all interlinked really. So one is communication. So how you communicate. So what you say, how you say it, and when you say it. Um, I think uh, uh, I'll go into this in a bit more depth in a minute, but um, yeah, just communicating with uh, with women and, and and girls is, I think, uh, there's differences uh, to how you do it with boys. Uh, I think the environment is really in, uh, is really important. So uh, creating a a training environment so how the player feels at games is and that training is, is really important to get the best out of uh, to get the best out of individuals in the team um, the culture and the team building um, and, you know I think uh, making the whole team involved 
and the whole team the whole team needs to be on board yeah not having favorites everybody working together um it's uh it's, it's a it's it's a really important part of it and then uh and then how you motivate players um it's probably very very important as well it's uh getting to know your players um some simple ga- goal setting tasks um tilt team building exercises and uh you know, knowing what your what your players want out of out of uh, out of the game to to really uh, to motivate them, uh, and then I'll move on from there to uh, creating a competitive environment. Um, I say said earlier the environment's really important, but um, you know I said earlier in the uh, in the introduction that boys and girls are are competitors, you know, and they. Uh, They've got that desire to to improve, to compete, and to win. Um, so, you know, it's probably what's different there is uh, using different strategies um, and, use, and using the right strategies to get the uh, to get the best out of your players. So you uh, so you can create a really um, competitive and challenging environment for them. And then the last the last thing is uh, is most probably just. Cont- I'll talk about then is, is controlling your mood and controlling uh, your body language around players. So how you uh, how you act and uh, and and the uh, and, and your mood can really um, can really affect how the how the players feel and, and if they're feeling if you affect the way that they feel you can you can affect the way that they play. So um, that's just a, just a brief overview of what we're. Uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight, but probably I'll start with this probably the uh, the most important thing. Um, I say many of these I've talked about before. Many of these headings uh, kind of work across um, and are intertwined with each other, and communication is one of those. Uh, I think uh, females uh, are wired a little bit di- differently males in general Uh, they have um, superior verbal agility Uh, they connect deeper in with in friendships and relationships and uh, uh, I think to to get the best out of players uh, we really need to as coaches invest time and energy in getting to know the person I think that's that's uh, that's that's the first thing uh, that um, to get players to to trust you, um, building a relationship with a person, and being uh, showing them that you you care about them as a as a person, not just a player, can can be really important. Um, and I, if I'm going to give it a bit of advice to to anyone um, dealing with female players, it's never never underestimate the power of of, of a relationship. Um, um, and that that might just be you know starting spending a few minutes with uh with a player chatting before training you know, just just seeing how their day's been what's been happening at school how their job's going um and the and the i think the more that you uh the more you have spend those little bits of time away from away from football and show that you care about them i think the better things get for you uh, and the better the relationship grows uh, on and off the field, uh, and then players begin to trust you, um, and that's and that's really important. Uh, uh, I think part of the part of the communication as well is uh, a big part of it is, is listening. Um, you know, I think uh, players need to know that you that you. That you're listening to to what they're saying. You know, I've I've also found that um, uh, just again, at times asking asking players about uh, not just about what uh, what they're doing outside of the game, but um, you know, asking asking questions about training, and training games, and seeing seeking players' opinions um, can be can be really useful and. Uh, to make small changes, uh, for example, I know with with our W League side, at times there's you know we 
give an example, team warm-ups, you know, um, is uh, on, on a game day, we speak to, speak to the players, you know, what do they prefer um, in, the, in the setup of their warm-up? Um, uh, so in, earlier in the week, we, we speak to them, how, how do they want it set up? You know, what, what do they want to do on game day? And, and seek seek some feedback and uh, and just just listen to them then let, let them have a little bit of say in, in what they're doing and and it kind of makes sense that um, if they if they're happy doing something and they want to do it and um, we're happy with with the changes uh, then, then let's do it and I think uh, especially on game day we uh, we speak to them, we, we listen to them, um, and we change things that they want changed. Um, and then the players feel listened to, they feel part of the decision ma uh, making process and, uh, you know, and things work a little bit more smoothly than on, on game day and they feel they feel better on the game day. And again, that's, that's really, uh, it's really important. Um, um, I say, um, player feedback again it's really really important so so we've, I've talked about um, I've talked about uh, valuing the value in the person um, and building relationships there but again you know with uh, with with victory being a, a performance a performance based team um, uh, obviously, the players need constant feedback about how they're going and uh, and how how they're progressing. Um, but I think I think in in general, um, whether you're whatever level that you're coaching at, it's uh, it's really important that um, um, that you that you keep giving constant feedback to your players. Uh, um, players want feedback um, when they do well or when when they're not doing so well. Uh, I found that. Especially so with uh, with female players, uh, they want to know, they want to improve. So, you know, I think it's it's really important to keep keep feedback regular, um, and 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 put it into uh, as part of your training process. Uh, build it into your to your weekly uh, to your weekly organisation. Uh, I think it's again, it's it's really important to keep it keep things positive. Um, come to players uh, not 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 with the negative side of things and obviously this you know if uh, if there's things wrong with players games and me changing uh, be constructive be positive uh, come with solutions um, and like I say if you keep things regular and you um, and you keep it part of the training process uh, uh, you, you you won't you won't get ambushed at times, <laughs> um, and you'll 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 come prepared, and you'll you'll uh, uh, you'll feel like um, you'll feel like you're ready you're ready to give uh, ready to give uh, ready to give give that feedback, and uh, players players take take the feedback so much better. Um, if if you can be constructive and uh, and, and come from a, a positive place, uh, again, maybe sandwich a little bit of constructive criticism in the middle with some uh, um, individual positive feedback to start with, and and try and try and leave them coming away with uh, feeling like they've uh, they've got a solution to to the problem and uh, they've uh, there's been a, a positive outcome to the. Uh, to the conversation, um, and I guess the the last thing in in terms of uh, in terms of communication, uh, I guess most of you will know that uh, um, from coaching uh, female players is uh, I just think that in general um, players want to know the why why they're doing things. Um, uh, I think that comes from the fact that um, I think girls, women like to see the big picture. They like to see the whole thing, um, and they need to know why they're doing things. 
Yeah? And from my experience, most probably won't commit 100% until they do know why they're doing something. Uh, but again, from my experience, if you can communicate that, um, that this is why we're doing it, this is how it fits into to, uh, to, to what we're doing, to our, to our weekly or our, or our annual plan, this is, this is part of the plan, and this is why, why it's, I think female players will buy in and they'll commit uh, as much, even most probably even more than the, the males. Um, so I guess it's it's just about then making sure that you deliver your message um, clearly, concisely, and maybe uh, think about doing it in in, in different ways. You know, uh, it might be uh, you stand up in front of them and just just deliver talk. Uh, you do it on a whiteboard. You use you use uh, um, you use X's and O's, you use, uh, you use video, you use handouts, cones on the ground, but you, you get your message across and I think uh, once you once your players have got that uh, got that why they're doing things, then you then you're really on the uh, on the road to um, your, your players buying into what you what you've done. So I guess for me the main things just going over the main things Good communication builds trust. Um, it involves listening to what your players are saying and showing that you that you're listening by by making making changes to at times making changes to things that you do. Um, building good relationships, real a real key. Show show players that you value them as a person as much as a player. Maybe before as a before them as a player. But also, players need you as a coach. They need a strong coach that's going to uh, that's going to make them better, and to give them feedback. So that feedback is really important. Um, keep it consistent. Keep it regular, uh, and and make sure you you address address the why. Um, is there uh, are there any any questions there around communication? Uh, anyone anyone's got anything that they want to? Uh, add to that things that they might do um, or things that you're doing to uh, to make the communication better at, at your clubs or, sh or do you want to do you want to move on okay we'll move on yeah oh Jeff it's Cas. hi Cas. Uh, hi mate um, I, I was just going to add I think you make a really good point um, about the trust and 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 listening in that uh, in that communication space. Um, yeah. The one thing I guess I was going to ask you is um, uh, you talked about um, listening to the players, especially you know on on match day and in preparation. Mm -hmm. um, how have you found that over you know your your coaching uh, journey? Um, I guess differ from from when you started coaching to to now and and um, I guess listening to the players on on how they should warm up and also I guess in consideration to um, where you're at with results and and having to win how you then um, can stay I guess consistent or or uh, true to your your team I guess philosophy and, and yourself to to stay with that if if the results are not um, you know, going in the direction you'd like them to. Okay, so yeah, look, I, it's, it's um, obviously I go back and talk about talk about trust. You know, you're nowhere if if your if your players don't trust you and they uh, they don't trust what you're saying. Um, yeah, look, um, I got a couple of stories I can tell you actually, it's, uh, and, and based around match day. Um, I uh, when I was back back at Bris in Brisbane, uh, coaching Brisbane Raw first first few years. Um, it's uh, and I um, the the period before the game. So when they get to the ground, you do your team team meeting, you talk to the players, uh, you listen to a little bit. Some of the feedback from the players, and then right, you leave the players to get uh, to get um, to get ready for the game. 
match, match day should be the players' day, and uh, you try and keep away from the players, give them a little bit of a have a little bit of a chat with them, try and put them at ease, but also, um, you know, try and keep out in the way a little bit to take the pressure off. Um, that's as a coach, the time of that's the time I hate. I just want to get the game. I want to get to the game, talk to the players, and get the game on. And uh, the feedback I was getting from the players was uh, I was making them nervous because I'd be walking around the place uh, and uh, getting into the lollies and chewing the lollies. And, uh, and you know, after, uh, after three or four weeks or so, the players came to me and said, oh, look, you, you've got to... Uh, you, you make us nervous. You, you, you look like you're really nervous. I said, oh, oh, I'm not nervous. It's, I just want the game to start. So um, I tried to I can confirm that, keep yeah? out of the chat. <laughs> yeah, well, G, G, G will tell, tell you that as well. It's, uh, I, uh, um, I tried to keep, a, keep away from them, keep out of the change room through that period. But every, a lot of fruit yeah, very so quickly. I, uh, I, um, I left the lollies away, but even even now, it's I still really hate that time time of the uh, between um, between the team meeting and the kickoff. And uh, I often go out, go out of the changing rooms because when I'm in and around the players, um, now I eat fruit instead of uh, eating lollies. But uh, it does my behaviour, my uh, Sort of want to get the the game on and get get it happening uh, sort of rubs off rubs off on the players. Uh, it's probably the other thing that I've stopped doing as well, um, and it's something I've 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 learned now is that on match day, like I said, match day is is about the players. It's it's their day. Uh, all the preparation should be done in the week, um, and it's really about maybe you can affect the players maybe maybe at half time and maybe with your substitutions and, and a bit of uh, advice in the game and changing things in the game um but i i found that i was um going out to warm-ups and i was on match day trying to coach in the warm-up before a game and again was affecting the, affecting the players in a negative way again wanting to wanted everything to be perfect on match day and i was i was actually affecting the players in a, in a negative way so now again i try and keep out of the change rooms while the players are in there um apart from when i'm having a quick chat with them and then when the players go out to the out to the field to warm up i normally go into the change rooms and sit, sit down and uh, have a little think about things and then maybe go out, but I never, never really go out onto the pitch because uh, I don't want to affect the, uh, don't want to affect the players um, in a negative, in a negative way. Um, and most probably the, the other thing uh, where you, you talked about um, having to win and the pressure to win. Um, look at, it's funny, we tried to do things a little bit differently this, this year in terms of, um, especially uh, giving the players a little bit more say um, around the training, and even that went into into games as well. But I most probably found that that worked at times. So within the training environment, I think it was really uh, it was really good listening to listening to the players and what their needs were around the training um, around what we did in training, how much we did in training, and they gave us some really good, valuable feedback, and we, we took that on board, and we, we made some, some changes to, to the type of training we were doing and when we were doing it, and uh, players really reacted well to that, and we got a great reaction from the players, and the quality of the training was, was excellent. Um, in terms of the games, um, it's probably uh, tried to do it in a limit in a in half time is really difficult um, you get 15 minutes from whistle to whistle sometimes it takes a couple of minutes to get in another couple of minutes to settle the players down and you maybe have got yeah eight to ten minutes of talking time to to affect the game and um we tried to let the players have a little bit of a say <coughs> but um what we found or what i found was um, that 
uh, at times I wouldn't have enough time to to really speak uh, and say the things I needed to say but also with so many voices in the in the change room that got a little bit um, the message maybe got a little bit blurred so um, as the season went on it was almost kind of taking back that half time uh, taking back that half time talk and uh, um, just trying to kind of take charge of that again because um, uh, this this obviously there's sometimes when you need to be uh, talking sometimes you need to be listening but uh, I think uh, half the half time talk is most probably the head coach is the main uh, for the main part um, give you give you your message or your two or three main messages and make them nice and clear and I, I definitely thought in the first three or four weeks of the season that they that they most probably weren't and that was that was my fault by trying something that uh, that didn't work so uh, yeah look it's uh, it's kind of a something that you know even I call myself reasonably experienced as a coach and uh, I'm still I'm still making mistakes and still learning from them so um, yeah it's a uh, that's kind of a uh, couple of stories or a few stories from over over the years and things, a couple of successful things and obviously something that, uh, that wasn't so successful this year as well. Thanks for the question. Thanks, mate. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, look, um, the, the playing and training environment is, is, is really key, key, I think, with, uh, with female players as well. Um, I've found that the uh, uh, over time that to get the best out of the team, the environment really needs to be right. Um, and and what I think what most players are looking for is a training environment where they feel they feel safe, uh, where they where they in, they enjoy coming. Um, it's kind of almost like uh, the, the safety of home. Um, they feel like they're coming into an environment where they can enjoy themselves, uh, where everyone's treated well, uh, everyone's treated equally as well. I think that's really important. Um, I think that's something that um, I definitely found in female players that they're, they're very aware of, of the group and they're aware of everyone in the group. And uh, if one or two people are being treated differently, Either better or, or worse than they they they'll, they'll cotton on to that, and they'll uh, that will that will that can has the potential to uh, to upset the the environment. Um, and also, it has to have uh, I think aspects of fun and social element elements. And I, I, again, at whatever level that you're playing at, I think you know the that fun element has got to be has got to be there and I think especially uh, the fun and the social elements is really important to, to female uh, to female uh, players I think they've uh, obviously the females in society are the kind of the nurturers and they they want to make sure that everyone's looked after and uh, and that side of things is uh, is really in, important um, um, the physical environment as well is really important. I think uh, um, it's something that we most probably didn't do perfectly this year. Um, you know, having when they turn up, having their own own change rooms, um, uh, access to, to good quality training facilities. So you know, you know at some clubs, I know the, the female team is they don't they don't get access to the to the main field or they, they put on uh different fields to to the boys the boys get the better they you know and you know things like this make make a make, make a real big difference you know giving them giving them access to better quality fields uh, making sure they're they've got the proper equipment balls bibs cones are all clean and, and tidy and they're, they're their own so they get this sense of belonging so um there's the there's the, the the environment in terms of um, 
that physical environment, but always obviously there's then the uh, there's that feeling of environment as well, which is really important. Uh, and uh, I say it's a it's for me that's a, it's a that's a really important thing. Um, and I know at Victory our environment is uh, it's kind of shaped by three solid boundaries. That's safety, enjoyment, and learning. Um, and in our team, it's uh, it's just unacceptable to put put at risk uh, anybody's safety or their ability to have fun and to learn. So those are the three kind of key things that we we look at. Um, it's critical that you have a, a real positive environment as well. Um, that's you know both kind of fair and honest as well. So. Um, like I said, everyone's treated equally, um, and you know, you're, you're honest with with your players whether they're they're doing things well, they're doing things poorly. Um, uh, you're honest with them, and uh, you're at, you're open with them as well. And uh, I just really believe that um, if you get if you get this right, that will lead to your players learning, getting better, um, enjoying what they do and in turn that will lead to uh to success whatever whatever success kind of looks like in uh in your uh uh in your clubs so but success for us is uh happy players players that are improving and uh obviously um performing well and uh, uh winning games on the field uh anything anything from from that that um anywhere else you want me to go with uh with the playing and uh training environment or or environment in general okay i'll keep moving um again it's kind of linked linked in now um and most probably the team culture and team building um i find this is probably at times a little bit easier with female players as a as a, a generality um uh, in general they they kind of got a greater sensitivity and kind of empathy for uh for their teammates and, and less of uh and there's less ego involved with women than there are with with uh, boys and men um uh, I think women and girls, their interest in in people and relationships is is uh, is greater than the, than the guys, and so uh, and the, the team often comes first. So it's a little bit easier to uh, to to get the team culture and 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 your team building uh, happening there. So. Um, I guess one of the one of the things I've found is to just to just to make sure that you you bring everyone along and that the whole of the group are included in everything that you do. Um, no one no one should be excluded anyway. But I think um, um, if female players uh, are all about the whole group and everyone. Um, they have that, like I said, that that kind of in, in, inbuilt uh, nurture, nurture, nurturing. So it's uh, um, if players are either excluded or not joining in, they they do they do notice that, and um, it, it can affect the uh, the team dynamics, and it can affect the uh, the culture and and the team building. Um, um, so it really has to be a, a collaboration between the club and the team, um, and it may there may be a few things in your in your in your team culture that you know that, that the club insist on having it in there um, that uh, you know you have to integrate into into your into your team uh, your team culture, but. Uh, to, that's probably to be successful and to get tr true buy-in, it, it's got to really be uh, driven by the team, um, and, and everything's got to be player-driven. Um, so, and it's 
I guess for, for me with female teams, it's all linked to uh, team unity, good relationships uh, are a big part of the success criteria. So it's often recognizing the group recognizing behaviors that we want to allow and what we'll not accept as behaviors and and uh yes it's uh it kind of just kind of comes down to that uh um this is i guess it's kind of in the past we've used this is us and this is what we do and this is not us and it's, it's kind of as simple as that and and if and when people stray away from that and they show behaviors or they act the way that we that's not us then it's important then you that you deal with these things as soon as you can before they get out of hand and hopefully you can do it in a in a relaxed manner and by just reminding them that this behavior is something that us as a group of uh we've uh, we've agreed that this is an unacceptable behavior and uh and yeah it's it, this is not us and it's a lot of the time um this can this can just uh nip, nip things in the bud really really uh, really early um, um in terms of um team building again i think uh don't underestimate the power of a of a team building exercise or a a team dinner, uh, a class, even a classroom session, or a, or just a fun field session. I think uh, to to build build that team, that team unity and uh, that um, that cohesion. It's uh, um, it's funny that it, uh, it was probably if you'd said this to me ten years ago, uh, and said right, um, okay, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a we're gonna take a, a technical session off the field and we're going to go and go bowling or go go out for a team meal just to just to connect and just to just to, to work on the team uh, team bonding i'd i would never have ever uh, given up a team uh field session for uh for a team um team building session but uh it's probably now i i'm complete i'm completely opposite way um I think when you're looking at the big picture and you're uh, um, and you look at what you'll gain out of it to what you'll lose from missing a, a team uh, one team session on the field, um, I definitely uh, I definitely go for the uh, for the team building exercise uh, because um, I kind of understand now a little bit more that uh, that if you get the, the team culture, the team cohesion right, that um, that you've that's that's worth so much more to to your team than a than maybe a a technical or a tactical session uh, on the field. Um, this can this can this can carry you through that night. This can carry through uh, onto the field and uh, and further than that as well. So. Um, Team culture, team building, I guess is uh, is uh, just to recap. I, I, I found it easier with uh, with female teams. Um, as long as you you're inclusive, everyone's included. Uh, make make it about the whole team and everyone everyone together. Um, and and say uh, spend a little bit of time on it. It's probably still probably coming out of this year's um, uh, this year's W season. We're still we're probably looking at doing more around team culture and team building again next year. Um, we we I don't know if you remember we went off to the women's club championship this year, so we we got to spend a lot of time with with each other um, over in Korea. Um, and uh, that gave us an opportunity to, to spend time together and get to get to know the girls and the girls to get to know each other a little bit more. Um, but still, still this year, uh, most probably didn't do enough. And it's one of the one of the 
uh, things that we've taken out of our review of the season is that we need to uh, to do to do more earlier in the season just to get that team unity uh, as good as it possibly can be. So I see a, a question here. Hope, hopefully it's not been there too long. Yeah, okay. Can everyone see that question? Um, so Tim's asked me, uh, what if certain players don't get along? Um, the, the coach can't force them to be friends. How do you deal with uh, that? Uh, building a friendly environment and happy players? Look, um, I think um, it's, a, it's kind of a fact of life that um, everyone's not going to get on. Um, but I guess if you go back to the environment, um, you, um, you set an environment where uh, um, everyone's accepted. It's, uh, it's uh, an inclusive environment where uh, everyone accepts that maybe there's a, everyone's a little bit different. Uh, we're not all going to get on, but um, uh, I guess when the, the players kind of trust their environment, they trust the coach uh, and there's, there's a, a respect there um, for for your teammates, I think that's that's most probably the that's most probably the the thing that uh, is most probably the, the most important thing that you uh, um, you've got. You might not like who you're playing with, but you've uh, you you can trust them and you can respect them, and uh, that's kind of uh, um, I think that's uh, that's all you all you can hope for. Um, but again, if uh, if players upset that team environment, um, then that's unacceptable. So uh, then that's something you'll have to uh, that's something you have to deal with. Um, you know, as being say being part of a team is uh, is sometimes having to put up with. People that are a little bit different than you, people that uh, have got different views to you, uh, people that might want to play the game slightly different to you, um, and that's that's kind of being part of a team. Um, and yeah, it's look, it's uh, it's something that we have to deal with. And I think in 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 general, if you've got the trust of the coach and you trust your teammates and you've got the respect of your respect of your teammates then i think uh i think in 99 percent of the of the cases um uh, the team can can still function and the you can still have a, a good friendly and happy environment um if it doesn't work then that might be the time when uh you might have to uh um, take two people to one side and have a chat with them and, and see if you can kind of resolve any any differences and and if not then uh then uh, it might be that one of them has to uh has to leave the environment but i think there's a there's a lot of steps before that before that uh the, the most drastic uh step there hopefully that uh that answers answers that question all right Any any more questions before I move on? Okay. Um, yes, it's a here's a similar a similar um, similar to team culture and team building. Um, had had to motivate players and look it's most probably i talked earlier about how things are linked in and if you've uh, got the, the three previous things right good communication uh good inclusive environment positive environment and the culture's good then um 
you most probably have got a good idea what's already because you know you know your players you know and you've set the environment up well you kind of got a bit of an an idea of what motivates uh what might motivates your players and uh and you might already have a highly hard working highly motivated side but it's uh sometimes it's it's quite easy just to assume that your players share the same goals as you and uh success kind of looks the same to you as it does to them um and uh yeah it's uh i, th I think uh knowing knowing your, your players as individuals um understanding their personalities is going to make things more likely for you that you you know what motivates them um, um and what their what their goals are um and also uh, I've, I've found that um, with most women and girls that I've worked with, although they they've all they all have their their own specific individual goals, which are really important to them. Um, group goals, team cohesion, and kind of that social integration and collaboration within the squad is is also really valued by them. And at times they um they gauge success and failure in terms in terms of that as well so it's not just about them as individuals and it's not just about how the team's performing but you know still have players coming away after improving really a great deal after having a really good individual season the team playing really well and finishing well on the ladder but still coming away disappointed because team didn't really gel as they hoped the team would uh, so um again there's there's a there's a lot of components to uh to put together to to really make sure that your that your team's highly motivated and high, highly performing um i guess going back to knowing your players um, um i think it's worthwhile i don't know how many of you how many of you do this with your teams i think maybe maybe some of you do some of you don't but um a simple goal set setting day is is, is good and again it might be in your pre-season um some something you put you put um, aside for a team building day um and it can it can be done very very quickly um yeah, just just get each player to uh, to think about a few individual and a few and a, and a few shared goals. So it's things they want to do well for themselves and they want to improve. Uh, what, what what their hopes are for the uh, for the team. Um, and they're, they're always they're always good to uh, to write down and to keep. Uh, and then they're really good reference points then for for the season to to. Uh, to start giving feedback to your players on, um, but I think there's, there's one thing you just need to be really careful with that if you do spend a bit of time um, with goal setting and uh, getting the players to to do this, it's it's really important that you that you follow up and then and you're consistent and you're regular with your feedback on the players because uh, um, obviously if 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 you don't it's very easy to uh, for them to feel left out and neglected, and uh, by not visiting the goals, it can be uh, you know it can give them the feeling that they're uh, that, that you don't care, and all the all the hard work that you've done building your relationships can be can be undone quite quickly. So um, uh, and again, it's you know I think by revisiting goals, it doesn't have to be a formal process. It can be you know, it can be it can be just a quick a quick word in in your, your uh, in the players here. You keep strengthening your relationship. You keep building that bond between yourself and uh, and the players, and you keep them you keep them motivated. Um, you know, just a small a small conversation to a player just before training, during the break in training, after training, um, or just as simple as just leaning over and um, just commenting on. The first touch 
first touch is coming on really well. Keep up the good work. You know, players respond to this, um, and and <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's pretty time effective as well. When you you know, if you've got 20 players to affect over a, a short period of time, then uh, yeah, just keep it keep it uh, keep it short and keep it um, concise and yeah, and just but, but uh, it's got to be regular and consistent. Um, again, in terms of feedback. I don't, I'm not again not sure how you, you give your feedback, but yeah, it might just be a one-to-one uh, -one conversation. Yeah, yeah, you might. Uh, I know we we do a fair bit of video feedback, so we uh, we show players the whole game, um, the whole every every week we record the game. They they get their individual highlights. Um, and we we do sometimes we do some some individual clips as well. We go through their clips with them. Um, but again, um, there's a bit of an onus on on our players to actually come to us with those as well. So, um, but again, it can be uh, it can be video. It can be you know it can be a grab a grab a whiteboard and show them some some tactical stuff, some positional things. Uh, I think the key is just to just to make sure that you're giving them feedback, you're giving them time, um, and you're uh, you're consistent with it. Um, and that's probably the uh, the other thing to to keep them keep them motivated is uh, um, is to keep challenging them. Um, players, female players, male players, footballers, they want to they want to be challenged. They want to keep getting better, and um, If players are reaching their goals, um, they've set those goals, and they're reaching those goals, don't let them uh, just don't let them rest. Yeah, um, make sure they uh, they reach the goals. You congratulate them. You maybe consolidate for a little while, and then you move them on. Yeah, get them uh, get them challenged again. Set some set higher goals. Set Set them other other things to, to do, and because uh, that's that keeps that keeps your teams uh, that keeps your teams motivated and uh, and really uh, uh, especially with younger players keeps them keeps them moving moving on and moving forward. Um, and most probably just the, the last thing there is, um, and it's something I've I maybe fallen into a number of times is you know, with with your with your with your older, experienced players as well, you, you need to you need to keep them motivated. Sometimes you, uh, you know, people like your, your Natasha Dowies, you know, the, you know, just because they're performing at a really high level week in week out and they're very self-driven, doesn't doesn't mean that you you don't give them feedback, you don't keep them keep them going because. Uh, and, they need it just as just as much as the uh, as the younger girls, and sometimes they they most probably need it a little bit more because because uh, you you don't give them as much uh, as as much time because you you understand that they're uh, they are that self driven. So it's uh, it's uh, it's a it's a really important uh, really important thing for you to to understand that um, yeah it's not just about the younger players or certain players with uh, with weaknesses. You know your best players still. Need to uh, need to be driven and need to be motivated, and uh, so don't don't forget about them as well. Okay, let's have a look. There's another question here. Um, given the current COVID nine COVID nineteen uh, situation, how do I suggest to keep players motivated? Yeah, look, um, it's it's been difficult. Um, I've been working with the with the academy over the last eight weeks, and our players have been uh, have been doing their remote learning. So they've been they've been doing a couple of couple of physical sessions per week and strength, and then they've been doing uh, two or three um, technical sessions a week, and we've been uh, getting the Getting them doing some tactical stuff as well, um, but it's yeah. Look, it's the 
the take up on that has been quite uh it's been pretty good but there's definitely been uh been players that have lacked lacked a bit of motivation um and it's uh it's it's really a difficult thing uh i guess it's uh what we've tried to do is is to try and highlight that um this is now a, an opportunity for um there's, there's certain things that you won't be able to do no contact no tactical um tactical stuff no um uh, everything's everything's about just improving technique so there's a lot of stuff that um and we've spoken to the boys about it a lot of stuff that we don't get the time to do with players on the field even with uh sort of four contacts and a game a week we still don't get to do enough technical work so um try and look at two or three areas that that we've uh that we've recognized where they're most really need improvements and, and use this uh use this time to to actually do some work on on parts of your game that um that you don't normally get to work on and uh see if you can uh see if you can make improvements uh in those in those areas while uh while you've while we've been off uh and then when you come back onto the field hopefully that will uh and you can start start the team stuff again and you start the contact stuff again you'll you'll see the uh see the benefits and i think that's probably when they when players do come back and they get back onto the field that uh that's the uh that's the time when they see that uh what they've done has been worthwhile and uh and they they actually uh, uh they actually grow from that so that's kind of where we are in terms of motivating players at the moment through uh through this period yeah look um it's probably this is a again a tough one to, to talk about I talk about an environment where you know players feel safe um there's uh enjoyment um and and then then we talk about a competitive challenging environment so how do you go from yep players coming in into a, a nice social atmosphere where they feel comfortable they're having a bit of fun and then they flick the switch uh, to uh to make it a competitive training environment and uh you know that's most probably the uh one of the uh the most difficult things um and how do you how you move from your your welcoming fun social environment to um to allow for that competitive challenge those competitive challenging sessions um because girls want to win <laughs> just as much as as the boys do uh and females want a coach that will give them that safe environment but also um, an environment that allows them to to practice with intensity um, that allows them uh, an, an environment that allows them to to improve and to learn new skills and to that really challenges them uh, and uh, you know we we talk about having fun but we talk about having uh, serious fun um, and you know in in the boys environment it's it's often you know when you you know that environment's often about um, being the alpha male in a pack of of 20 players so you get 20 boys running around trying to outdo and dominate everyone else uh, but i think within the female environment uh with women and girls there's there's more of an affinity to towards the team um and it's it's often best to to, to link the the individual challenges and the individual improvement to to the team uh, so probably when framing your session or doing your, your team talk or you, you link individual actions to to the team and to, to success um, so uh, you know for instance you know by by working harder 
okay, um, and winning the ball back quickly, uh, you'll allow us to win the ball back further up the field, closer to the opponent's goal, and it gives us uh, our defenders uh, less less defensive work to do. So you're, you're saving your teammates, and you're saving your teammates. Um, um, time and um, time defending, giving them giving them more opportunities to, to go forward. So you, you're you're linking your individual actions to team success. And I think that that kind of uh, that really that really works with um, with with female players. Uh, if you instead of um, so create a climate of cooperation and personal improvement where players want to work for each other and um, not let the team down. I think that most probably will work better than um, one where the, there's internal individual competition it dominates your sessions. I think, I think again, tapping into the, the um, so the, the team side of things is uh, is definitely is definitely work. It definitely works, and uh, I think when when you when you tap, really tap into this, you, you find that uh, female players will really buy into this, and because nobody wants to be the one that lets the team down. Um, so um, I've got another couple of questions here. Jaden. Do you work with players? Okay. So Jaden's asked a question. I'm not sure if you can see this, but um, how long do you work with players who are at a different level of, in skills? And how far do you bring your experience players back? Um, most probably, I've, I've had this question before, and uh, at the W League level, um, it's again, it's not about bringing players back. Um, it's uh, it's more about um, pushing the players that are maybe at a lower level to to strive for. Um, to strive for uh, to the the higher level, so setting higher benchmarks rather than bringing your uh, bringing your better players back to the to a, a medium um, a medium level, um, which is which which is tough. Um, so it may be that um, within within sessions, players that are not reaching the uh, uh, Reaching the levels, look, we we do at times we split groups and um, um, yeah, look if we if we've got a if we've got a game on the weekend we may split the groups in a, uh, it might be if it's a, a day or two days before a game and we we're really focused on the game we'll most probably um, if we've got one or two players that are a little bit weaker or we've got a few younger players with us that day then we'll try and. Uh, fit those players together and uh, group group the the more experienced, higher level or the higher um, performing players together. But in terms of bringing players back to the group, we that's something that we don't do. Um, um, and I think it can be that can be a real demotivator for uh, for your senior players. And if I'm if I'm honest, my senior players would uh, would come running after me if I if I did that so uh, uh, yeah it's uh, it's about um, encouraging the uh, the players maybe and that's most probably our younger players that still maybe not at the same level as our senior players um, in, encouraging them to just to strive for uh, those higher standards um, definitely um, giving them time before the sessions, after the sessions, extra sessions to uh, just to build build their experience, to build their uh, their technical expertise, and, and helping them as much as we can. Um, and 
yeah, and just uh, um, making them aware that um, again that there are uh, the areas where they they've most probably got deficiencies, and um, I, I've found that most most players at that level are so keen to 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 work on their uh, to work on their weaknesses that um, they they all they'll go away and work on them uh, with a little bit of help from myself. Hopefully that. Um, that answers your question there. Thanks, Jane. Uh, I'm trying to think where I was now um, in terms of, um, yeah, look, uh, I guess a couple of things um, again to go back to is um, is keep the keep the players challenged, and I, I spoke about this um, as a motivating factor, but also as a um, a, a competitive factor to keep the keep the environment com, uh, competitive and and challenging. Um, if never never let, let the session get too easy for players. Never let them really be at a point where they can relax. Um, you've got to keep pushing them to their just just to the boundaries and and, and a little bit past. Um, and that's again that's where knowing your players inside out really helps you you understand what's what's enough for them you understand maybe what's too much for them um and uh yeah you just keep keep pushing them and, and like i said if they if they if they start achieving things and things become a little bit too easy for them um give them a give them a maybe a very short um pat on the back well done you've done well there um give them a very short period of consolidation to just to just to to do well at that level and then push them past it uh get them challenged and, and do it as quick as you as quick as um as you as you can um, um in terms of coaching terms um again um set team tasks set player tasks so every, every session set clear individual tasks for the players um, set a set a clear team task for the players so the players then it's not just about you pushing them they understand um, from the session objectives and from the tasks uh, individual and team what success looks like and um, they can then start to uh, uh, take a little bit of control of their own learning um, if they know what is expected of them um, they can then start uh, judging themselves on how well they've done and um, how challenged they've been and uh, so for most for most players in in our environment if if they're not being challenged they will come to you and tell you this this is this isn't this isn't challenging me. I need I need more. Uh, I need more intensity. I need uh, just uh, it, it, it could be about any part of the uh, the the training and the game environment. And then yeah, look, I think uh, with uh, with professional female players, they're they're happy to and confident enough to come and uh, um, and to and to tell you uh, say. Um, it's challenge is, is is a real big thing, and uh, say uh, get, getting that right is 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 uh, is one of the things that if you get that right, it's one of the things that keeps players coming back because players love to be players love to be challenged. Um, they love to just to be pushed just just at the right the right level. If it's too hard and too tough. Then, yeah, you've got it wrong there. If it's too easy, they won't come back. They'll they'll go and look. They'll go and look for another challenge. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, creating a competitive and challenging environment is 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 tough. But um, if you if you know your players, if you know what they're all about, um, then um, then yeah, there's uh, there's ways and means to have a a comfortable social environment where players are, are really hard at it and, and performing with intensity 
and uh, and and are really challenged uh, day in day out. And that's that's the type of uh, that's the type of environment that uh, that we strive for because it's a uh, inevitably it gives you a successful a successful uh, environment as well. Uh, anyone want me to go into anything else in terms of the environment? All good. And then I kind of finish up with uh, uh, with with this. It's uh, and I don't know how many females we've got, female coaches we've got here tonight, but um, I, I know for me as a male coach, it's something I've become more and more aware of over time that uh, female players can they seem to be able to gauge uh, my mood and my body language very very easily and you know before i realized this i've <laughs> you know it, it can be you know i could have been having a bad day and uh, and showing it to the players and you know um, or maybe trying out trying out something something new with them that i'm not 100 percent sure of and you know wow they, they pick up they really pick up on it and uh you know it's um it can it can really affect the uh it can really affect your your team and your uh the team dynamic and, and the, the mood of the team because they they really okay they if they if they pick up that you're not sure about what you're doing or or you're you're in a bad mood, or you you know, um, it, it can really uh, it can really roll over on, onto them. And uh, you know, I've I've found now at times that I have to really, uh, if I've if I've had a bad day, I've got to I've got to put my game face on and not 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 let anyone know what I'm feeling because uh, it can really affect the uh, the the mood of the group. And you know this. These could be these could be key, key moments. There could be uh, key moments of the game um, where you where you're showing that you're maybe a bit anxious. Um, you know things might not be going well for you um, in the game, and or it could be a you could have had a bad day, and it's a session before before, before a big game, and uh, you need to you need to make sure that your team are affected in a positive way. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely something that I've uh, that I'm definitely aware of, and I'd be interesting to get your feedback. That uh, to if 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 that's something that you've that you've noticed. Um, and it's as I say, it's something that you really that I really am, am really aware of, especially in and around games, because um, I, I think um, for me um, there's, there's this, and there's also I think in terms of uh, in terms of how my mood and my body language and and my, and my, my language and the way that I uh, talk to players, it, it seems to me over over time that uh, in under stressful conditions, I think women and girls they kind of respond by kind of forming connections and by looking for support of others and teammates kind of reach out to them so. You know, sometimes when you're when you're delivering a message at, at half time, or or maybe you, you know you're losing at half time, and you know, or you you've stopped stopped to correct a mistake in a, uh, in, in a training session, um, and then everyone's everyone's kind of listening, and the whole group there and are focused on what you're going to say, and it's um, it's how you say it. And your body language is just as important as what you're saying. Um, it's, and it's really, I've, I kind of learned that it's really important to be to be positive and to be supportive, because that in the, in those times of stress, the, the players looking for support. They're not looking to be to be embarrassed in front of the group, and you know, and you know, they're not looking to be have an aggressive coach kind of uh, put them down in front of the group because again they'll reach out and the teammates will, will reach out as well and you'll at times like this if you do things wrong the girls will get they'll they'll pull together as a team and they'll uh, they'll pull away from you and, and the moment the moment will be lost and I say if that's a if that's a, a key halftime talk 
where you've got to get maybe one or two one or two things over to your team and you lose your you lose your team because of the way that you're saying things or your body language is uh, is really negative or you're you're raising your voice or you're trying to put people down you know it's uh, it's it's really important that you that you get things that you get things right um, and uh, there's something I've I've really I've one of one or two key moments I, I've I've actually I've learned that by making mistakes I've 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 made mistakes. I've lost. I've lost the. Uh, I've lost the dressing room by by speaking to someone in uh, either a disrespectful way or or I've raised my voice to them. Um, and and we, we we all we all have our different um, our different responses to to stressful situations. And uh, as as a coach, uh, you've got to what you've got to think about is um, I what have I got to do and how have I got to do it to to get a positive response out of this uh, out of this person, and and a positive response from from the whole of the dressing room, and if that means that you've, you know, you've got to be positive, supportive, and you've got to ask, not tell somebody, uh, and maybe bring bring a solution to the problem, then that's the way that, that's the way that you've got to do it, because um, um, going about it the wrong way. Especially in a female dressing room, it's very, very easy to uh, to lose to lose the dressing room and for the players to uh, to kind of turn not turn against you, but uh, but for you to lose the uh, lose the whole point of uh, what you're trying trying to get across. Um, and then, yeah, so I, I guess there's a couple of questions here. Is uh, um, for you guys is uh do you are you going to be one that increases the stress levels or are you going to be someone that takes those stress stress levels away and uh um, and a lot of that can or a massive amount of that can be just around your tone your mood and your body language and uh i'd say in female female footballers and females in, in general they for me that's something they, they pick up much better than uh, than uh, their male counterparts i'll be again i'll be interested if there's anyone any uh any of you that have found similar things or uh would agree or disagree with that any uh any questions from from anyone in uh in terms of uh it's probably any any of the uh six things we've talked about okay I'll just uh, I guess I'll just uh, I'll just kind of sum it up by just showing you probably a few of the things that I uh, oh here we go we've got a, we've got a question okay no it wasn't a question someone agreed with me that's nice to know uh, um, yeah, look. Oops, it's all right. I um I've just put together a a quick uh. Just let me. Uh, just a, something I look for in uh in every session. I've looked to put together. Um, there's three things that I that I, that I try and do. Um, I try and get the uh. Number one, I try and get the uh, the organisation of the of the whole session done, planned as early as we possibly can. Um, I think about the environment and try and uh, try and look to get the the environment um, as as good as it can be for players coming in into the uh, into that environment. And then I look to to think about the communication. So probably. Uh, Sorry, I'm just uh, struggling here. Yeah, so in the organisation, uh, pre-plan everything that you do. Um, make sure that the uh, the session plan is uh, is is organised. Make sure that you get there nice and early. Um, 
and then look to uh, and look look to uh, get yourself out and once everything's set up nice and early, um, gives you an opportunity then to uh, to go and speak to, to go and speak to players to go and uh, you know have a little chat and get to know one or two of your, maybe one or two of your new players. Uh, just, if you know that players are coming from from school or coming from uh, uh, coming from work, go and have a chat with them. You know they're a little bit stressed, um, and just uh, just have a, a chat with them in in general. Um, make sure um, when once you get out on the the, the park, then uh, that your uh, your um, your session is it, it runs it runs well. It flows. It keeps the uh, keeps the players engaged, keeps them challenged, and uh, and uh, and and you 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 drop in little bits of uh, little bits of feedback and communication into your into your players, uh, drip feeding that through the uh, through the session. Um, the environment, um, then number two is the environment. Ensure that the environment's right. You know, you got the, you got to the place early. Make sure the change rooms are clean. Yeah. Make sure, hopefully, when the players are turning up, you've got everything set up out in the field. Uh, everything's ready, so you can you can greet the players as they arrive. Again, like I said before, plan to have a uh, a few conversations with uh, or, or a small conversation with with every team team member if you possibly can, and that might just be. Uh, um, Passing the time of day and and asking them how they, they, their um their day's been, uh, but be prepared to go a little bit deeper if you have to. Show show the the players that you're listening and you and you're prepared to listen as well. Um, watch for interactions of the players with each other. So again, looking for um anything that's not quite right in the in the environment as well. So we spoke about this before. Um, you uh, you know if if you see something that's against the 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 team environment or the team culture, um, you can if you see it nice and early, you can you can nip it in the bud and um, and, and finish that before it actually um, takes hold and, uh, and and gets any gets too too bad. Um, yeah, um, the environment as well. Again, we talked about. Um, Team building exercises, team building. Can can you plan something social on a on a regular occasion? So, you know, it might be a, a team. Uh, it might be a team dinner. It might be a team lunch. It might be a team breakfast. It could be a um, a trip to the beach. It could be a um, uh, could be a, a classroom session. Um, and look, some some of the social social aspects. Leave that to the players to organise. Yeah. Okay. Go and go and speak to two or three of your, your more senior players or or your more more outgoing players and ask them to organise something, yeah, a, a lunch or a dinner and and uh, yeah, it's uh, these these things are, are really important to uh, to keeping the team the team environment and team dynamic uh, uh, ticking over and uh, and healthy and it's something that we we look at in in every session. Uh, and then lastly, the communication. So again, we spoke about this before. Can we try and, you know, every single session, can you try and give a little bit of technical or te tactical feedback uh, to two or three players and keep keep that happening uh, uh, every session? So, you know, if, you, if you're looking at 20 players, so every couple of weeks, um, you should be, uh, should be giving a little bit of, um, Technical, tactical feedback to 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 every player in your in your side, and uh, and you know they they'll appreciate that, and that will keep them motivated and keep them keep them on on task for their for their uh, to keep improving themselves and and their uh, and their and their individual goals. Uh, and, and again, when as much as you can keep the keep the atmosphere positive. By keeping the uh, the communication positive, um, you may have to be honest with players and and deliver some some information that they might not like to hear. 
Um, but you've got to be honest and you've got to uh, let them know. But do it in a do it in a positive manner and always leave them leaving you with a with a positive message in uh, in their in their in their head. Uh, and then again, lastly, from from the environment over on number two, if you're watching the interaction of the players, um, for yeah, just to see that the the atmosphere is right. If if there's nothing, if there's something that's happening that's that's not good, jump jump on it as early as you can so it doesn't grow and gets uh, doesn't grow out of uh, out of control. So yeah, there must be the the three things that I look at. Um, obviously, the organisation side of things, I go into a, a huge amount of detail, but um, in terms of the environment and communication, I try to make sure that. Um, uh, yeah, there's uh, these 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 things are right, and if you if you look after these things, uh, and you do a little bit very often, then in in general your training and game environment, you know, doesn't doesn't need too much uh, too much tweaking. It, it uh, kind of looks after itself. Uh, but yeah, look, um, that's most probably the end of the. Um, the end of the presentation. Um, Say so it'd be great to uh, to have a chat now and to uh, to answer any more questions that anyone's got. On, I'm I'm happy to stay in there and to to answer whatever questions that you uh, that you want to want to fire at me. So um, if you if you want to fire a few more through, then uh, yeah, away you go. Um, let's have a yeah. look. There's one come through. Yeah, I just sent yep. I sent one a couple through there. It's Cass. Hi, Cass. I knew I knew you'd be sending a few through. Don't worry about that. I just want to keep you honest, mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, question is: Can you share with the group? Uh, what are some of the key drivers for you when coaching? What, what do you mean in terms of key drivers, Cass? Can you hear me all right? Sorry, mate. I had that was on mute. Yeah. Now, I guess no, what I'm saying is. Oh, Sometimes, uh, as coaches, we 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 really focus heavily on the players and the playing group and their welfare and, and what works for them. I guess, um, as a professional coach, can you share with uh, the group, you know, what drives you to uh, to get up in the morning and to uh, you know to take your sessions and and obviously um, and how you prepare yourself uh, as a coach on on match day. Yeah, sure. Look, uh, look. I guess, look, for for me, um, and one of the one of the key things about uh, working with female female players is, look, the thing that the thing that uh, motivated me at the start still motivate still motivates me today, and you know, um, it's not the the only thing, but it's it's kind of at the heart of everything, and you know, me as a person, um, it's it's funny. If if I see um, people not being treated the way they should be, uh, I I like to do something about it. And when I first came into the female game, um, I saw fifty sort of. I saw players that were not being treated. Properly, they they weren't given the respect they deserved. They weren't given the uh, the uh, the training facilities they deserved. They weren't given the competition, um, and they weren't given the opportunities that they deserved. So um, I wanted to do something about that. And over the years, I think the 15 years that I've been involved, I've I've tried to. One of the things that's kept me going is trying to. Make things better for, for female players, and to create better environments, um, to to give them as 
much as of an equal opportunity as they as they possibly can do. Um, and you know, and that that's still that still really drives me. That's really at the heart of what I do and why I do it. Um, yeah. And there's still a long way to go. I think I think things have things have improved and improved a great deal. Uh, but that's kind of still that's still where my passion is, and it still kind of burns inside of me that uh, I feel yeah, it's it's still there's still a long way to go, and that that kind of yeah that that kind of gets me going and gets me up. At, Five o'clock in the morning to uh, to get down to training at uh, quarter to six and then get everything set up and yeah it's a um, it's 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 a real it's a real drive for me and it's it's a it's a real focus um, um, to just to give the players the the best possible opportunity that um, that we can and uh, and I've got a um, it's probably got a, a staff at a Melbourne victory that, uh, that all feel the same way. They, they really want to uh, to provide a great training and learning environment for the players to to improve and to uh, to have success. Um, in terms of um, does that does that kind of answer it, or is there? Yeah, yeah, it certainly does. Yeah, I just uh, uh, I guess of, uh, carry on. Yeah. No, the reason why I ask, I guess, um, for a lot of coaches out out there, um, we we also need to be mindful of our, you know, our welfare and our um, preparation. Uh, um, and I think you've touched on that really well tonight on how uh, our behaviours and how we are anxious or not, how that reflects on on the playing group. But I think it's really important um, as coaches we take the time to. You know, do what's right for us, and and um, we've got to, you know, lead by example, but have some sort of internal motivation. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. spot on, mate. Yeah. Um, look, I guess in terms of um, uh, how I personally prepare for match day, so you, you're talking about my my routine as a as a as a coach, yeah. or uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it'd be good to share with with us, with all of us. Yeah, great. Yeah. Look, look, I, I guess. Um, Leading leading up to games, um, there's there's a, there's a there's a few things. Um, as the game gets closer, the stress levels get higher, I think. And as uh, that's with as a general bit of a generalisation, but in in general, that that's that's the truth for the for the players, um, for the coaches, just for every for everyone. The games the games getting closer. Um, um, for the coaches, the the workload really Im at our level anyway, and most probably at all levels, the workload improve uh, uh, increases as well. Uh, we have to uh, we have to um, organise our tactical sessions. Uh, we have to organise um, our set plays. We have to organise um, a, a couple of um, presentations to the players. So. Uh, uh, video presentation for um, for the team meeting. Video presentation about the uh, the opposition, the set plays. So there's a there's a lot of work and not a lot of sleep is had during that time. So um, you know, leading up to the last session, you know, I think there's a there's a fair bit of stress and um, and then once once it's been delivered, once you've Delivered the session, the last session, um, and you've delivered the, the team meeting. You most probably got a short team meeting to deliver before the game, but most most of the work's done. Then you get home, um, you put all the um, all the information up on then up onto uh, the huddle platform for the players to go away and um, to have a look at it. Then so um, they get the opportunity to to see it again. Uh, Watch the video again. See as much of the uh, of the um, the analysis footage of the opposition that they want to have a look at. Um, but for us, once it's up there, it's done. So um, I think it's then important for um, for the for you as a coach to to try and get yourself in as good a um, state of mind as you as you can for the game, because then 
like we've just talked about, um, you've got to go in and deliver a, a 10 or 15 minute um, pre-game speech uh, to, and you've got to yeah, be in a, a, in a good frame of mind and you've got to be nice and positive. Um, and like I said, uh, the, players, the players will pick up on anything that's not right with you. Uh, even if you had a bad night's sleep, I'm, I'm, yeah, and even in in the nicest of ways, the players, you know, players will just come up to you, and say, "Hey, Jeff, you're looking tired today," or you, you know, or you stop stop eating so much fruit. You're you're looking you're looking nervous, and so again, you gotta you gotta make sure that um, although most of your work's done, that uh, now the little things like your body language and your mood is 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 all right, and uh, but also you, you get Hopefully you, you get yourself a good night's sleep, um, so you're in the best possible condition, physically and mentally, to to maybe affect the team at half time um, and during the game. So you, you you watch things, you pick up things, um, and then maybe that's probably the last thing I'll do um, in the morning of a game if we're playing in the afternoon. I'll, I'll watch again a few key parts of what the opposition do and what I'm expecting them to do and just make some notes on maybe one or two changes that I uh, yeah a, a plan B and a plan C this is what we this is what we might do this is if, if this happens this is what we'll do and this um, and sometimes I'll use those other times something else will happen and yeah so yeah so, so I'm, I'm prepared there and, and then um, just go in and um, deliver what you got to deliver. Be be yourself and and hope that um, you've done you and and the rest of the team have, have we've all done enough together through the week to to get us through the uh, through the game with a with a successful result. Um, yeah, so I hope that uh, hope that uh, yeah. answers your question there. Um, I've got another one here. Where do you see the girls' women's game heading in the next three to five years? And what do you think of Australia hosting the Women's World Cup? Um, and what it would bring to the female landscape? Um, um, I guess they're both. I think they're both. Um, they're both intertwined here, and it's really important. First of all, it'd be Fantastic to, for Australia to get the Women's World Cup and be a, a massive boost to, um, to the participation levels, especially in, in this in this country. Um, um, and I think over the next three to five years, it's, it's really important that our uh, that our, that the grassroots grassroots level football keeps on keeps on progressing, keeps on building a, a much wider base. Um, and, and that will then lead up into, uh, into the, uh, into our NPL system. Um, we get more, more players at the, at the bottom of the base, um, which will, which will lead to, uh, to more players um, heading up the pyramid to the, uh, to the, to the semi elite and the elite levels. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, I think that that's that's really important. So we need to grow our participation levels, um, um, get hopefully get more more coaches, um, more people involved in in the in the female side of the game, um, and uh, I say yeah, um, because you know over the next over the next few years it's it's important that we we at, at all levels. Um, we show that the game is growing in this country. Um, at W League level, it's it's important that we uh, we make progress as well, um, because uh, you know it's really important to have a strong national league here um, to to support the uh, the bid for the for the for the World Cup. Um, but also, there's a, there's a number of threats as well. So for for our W League, um, you know the the window that we play in. Um, is, is getting is, is starting to be threatened by um, obviously by by Europe. We the our ability to keep our best players in the country is is being 
has been worn away by the, the professional leagues in, in Europe, by professional leagues uh, in the US, and maybe the expansion of the, the US league to, uh, to more teams might mean a, a longer uh, a longer US season, which will mean that maybe that we won't be able to attract such uh, good quality American players over to our league. So um, we we need to to really sit down and, and map out the next three to five years, um, and just to, just to see how uh, how we're going to go in, in in all in all areas. I think um, the uh, the grassroots level I think is is, is strong and healthy, um, um, but we we really need to put some uh, we really need to put some some resources into into the grassroots to to, to get to, uh, get the coaching right, um, get the participation levels up, and really support uh, really support the junior clubs at, at that level. Um, the MPL needs to, again, um, if, if the grassroots are fit, I'm a strong believer that if the grassroots level is strong, then everything feeds up from there. So I think it's, uh, it's important to, to look after your elite, uh, your elite pathways, but I think where the where the real work needs to be done is uh, is is to be put into into grassroots and and, uh, and say if we can get that right, everything will grow from there. And uh, the bottom of the pyramid, the wider and the stronger it is, the uh, the more the um, the better the uh, the top of the pyramid becomes. Okay. Um, as an under fourteen girls coach, I noticed one of my challenges is confidence with girls. Do you experience uh, the same at professional level? And would you have any tips to deal with that? Most probably, no, I don't at professional level. Um, but I've I've worked uh, over the years with uh, with under fourteen girls, with under twelve girls, with. Uh, um, back in my times up in up in Queensland, and and even um, with our uh, our pre academy group, we uh, and our development groups, and yeah, look, I I do um, I do see um, confidence of of younger girls um, as 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 a as a challenge uh, rather than a problem, um, and I guess. Um, the only advice I could give you is uh, is to again it goes back to your um, building building relationships with them um, um, building that uh, their their trust in you and and the confidence in you to uh, um, uh, I think what am I trying to say I think uh, I think it's a uh, uh, if you can be nice and positive with girls, uh, younger girls, um, and and you can help them, and you can show them um, that by you know by by setting goals and practicing and, and becoming better. I think the confidence comes from from that uh, from that improvement, um, and and also from from. From, from the coaches uh, having having a little bit of belief in them as well, so that coach um, that coach player relationship, and al almost almost as a seeing yourself as a as a mentor for 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 those young younger players, I think that that's really important. And if you can uh, and if you can gain their trust and their confidence in you, um, and then you you can then influence them. Um, with with what you're saying to them and with your positivity, and I think they'll come through that and uh, become a lot more self uh, self um, confident and uh, and that's probably a little bit more independent. And with that, confidence will gradually uh, will gradually will gradually come. And I think you know this most probably one thing I, I didn't say today is uh, in in the uh, in the presentation is that yeah most probably there's a 12, 13, 14 year old girls against 14 year old boys, you know, often girls are just as good, just as technically gifted, but they just don't see, they don't have the confidence to 
to uh, to see that. Whereas boys will, yeah, they're overconfident. They'll they'll see. They they won't. They're not shy in telling you how good they are. And uh, so, and, and I guess that's that's most probably uh, a a difference of boys and girls at that uh, age group. And uh, and it's it's just a it's a it's a challenge, but also it's something that I think we can definitely help with as coaches by being by being positive by building good relationships with uh with the younger girls and uh and helping them through this uh this period until they they actually get to realize that they they are actually good at what they're doing um here we go it's another one here uh, uh Jaden, uh, okay, so there's a question from Jaden. What age cutoff would you say is the max to make the W League? Um, look, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put an age on it. To be honest, uh, look, we, we've got a. Our W League this year, we had a, a range of ages from uh, 16 up until 31. I think uh, Tash Dowie was our oldest player. She was, th she was 31. Um, and um, trying to think which one of our younger girls was uh, Alana Janczewski, I think was our youngest player. She was 16, and she she got to play in the uh, she played in uh, against the Chinese champions in the um, the Asian Women's Club Championships. So, yeah, look, Tash Tash is 31. Um, she was up there with our best player. She got the uh, the golden boot in the league this year at 31. She she looks after herself. She's uh, really self motivated. Looks after her body, hasn't had too many injuries. So, look, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, cut anyone off because of their age. If they're, uh, if they're good enough, if they're um, motivated enough, um, and uh, you know they're they're of the, of the right standard, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no to a player because of their age. Um, So yeah, that's kind of where I am with that. Um, uh, community clubs face challenges when recruiting coaches into the girls' women's game. Do you have any suggestions or ideas for clubs when trying to recruit coaches for girls' women's teams? Um, yeah, look, I, I guess um, I guess it's uh, it's making. I, th I think for clubs, it's it's making the uh, um, making the your girls' programs attractive for coaches to come and, and train there. It's, I think um, um, we need to make sure that we we hold the girls' teams and the girls' programs um, in as in the same in the same light as we do our boys programs often um, often it's seen that the the female programs are uh, somehow ranked below the the boys programs and they're um, and they're uh, you know they that's that's how they're seen at clubs uh, so I think it's as as clubs we need to to elevate the uh, the importance of our of our girls teams of our of our women's teams, um, making sure that um, that we don't just say it as well that we we um, we kind of live by uh, live by what we what we say and uh, um, make sure that yeah it's uh, like I said earlier that the that the girls teams don't get put on the uh, on the furthest pitches on on the worst pitches you know with the uh, with the worst equipment, and you know, uh, we need to uh, we need to treat the, the female females and the female teams 
at least equally. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, it might be at the moment that um, you might need to, to treat the girls teams maybe a little bit better than you treat the boys to, uh, and you might maybe need to, uh, um, yeah, look, give some, uh, give some incentives to, 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 to the coaches to come and come and uh, um, come and coach your girls' teams, and that might be it. Might be okay. We'll uh, we'll help with your with your coach development. We'll uh, you know there's certain things that you can do to uh, to make it more attractive for for the coach. Uh, yeah, we'll you'll be training on the uh, the number one pitch uh, every, every time. You know, it's just there's there's the certain certain things, and it I think it comes down to the clubs, and you you see at some clubs that uh, you when you go into the club, the uh, the girls teams are are held in real high esteem, and they're they're respected, and uh, um, I think uh, you know coaches coaches want to go, and uh, they're going to be at clubs where they're. Uh, where their team and their and the coach is, is respected and, and held in a bit of esteem. So I think uh, yeah, it's uh, there's definitely I think it starts with uh, how you how you view your team um, and how you how you treat the team, and then, then obviously then there's there can be other 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 incentives to uh, to to keep the coach there uh, or to get the coach there. Yeah, one of them may be helping him with his uh, his coach education courses. It might be um, giving him some uh, an assistant coach to, to work with him, uh, yeah, just giving him some some extra resources to uh, just to help the to help the team, uh, and all these little things help. And, and gradually, I think um, when when people see that your uh, your that the clubs are taking the team seriously and they're they're recruiting good coaches and they've got um, the resources are, are there. Then um, that's when you start then to uh, to attract to, to attract more players and bring bring players into your, to your club. And it's uh, it's almost like you just need to uh, invest a little bit of time and, and energy into uh, into building your, your girls' programs. And uh, um, yeah, if you and things all things will happen from there. Um, okay. There's another question. Besides the NPL, what other links would there be for girls to get to Melbourne Victory, especially for girls in regional areas? Um, yeah, so, so that's a really good question, actually. Um, uh, I guess there's a. Uh, it's most probably something that you could you could help me with in in. In answering this, uh, but also uh, for me, the areas that we look at, um, we we look at our MPL sides. Um, we look at recruiting from our uh, our NTC groups as well. So, um, but again, that's uh, they the MPL normally feeds into your NTC groups. Um, yeah, look, um, I guess for us as as Victory that we 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 get our community programs out into the uh, into the regional areas, and uh, I know that um, if uh, if our community our community um, teams see players that they uh, that they think have uh, have got a, a bit of a, that are a little bit special out there. Then they they'll they'll pass on those uh, they'll pass on those names and their links to us. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's obviously there's uh, there's challenges for the uh, there's challenges for the um, for for the regional areas, um, and it's uh, it's it's an area that we've got we've got to be better in um, our uh, our recruitment for our uh, for our W League. Uh, doesn't drop down to um, an academy side yet, and that's that's our that's our next that's our next uh, uh, level that we're going to be looking at trying to uh, trying to to fix. And uh, once once we actually 
get our academy science up and running for the for the girls, then uh, we can seriously or, or look more seriously at our uh, at our recruitment and, and how we how we recruit uh, in the uh, in the metro areas and also in the uh, in the um, in the country areas as well. Uh, maybe Mark will Mark will Mark Castle will, uh, will be a good one to uh, to bring in on that one as well. Hello. Yes. Um, yeah. Look, I, I think um, it's a it's a it's a really good question um, um, across the board, um, and I think you touched on it earlier, Jeff. You know, we we've got to really try and expand on the grassroots um, in the girls' game with regards to player numbers, but also coaches to support that. But I think um, what one thing I think with what COVID's um, probably presented to all of us is that. Um, there's potentially some new opportunities out there to think a little bit differently from what we've all done in, in the past or, or currently doing. Um, so I think any any idea now is, is probably a good one. Um, and I guess uh, to the person asking the question, the, the, the distance of, uh, you know, the tyranny of distance between regional centres to the metro areas is, is, is great. But... Um, I think there's um, some opportunities that we can collectively work on to make that you know a little bit easier that that transition if possible bit easier. So uh, I just think it's bringing people to the table um, and collaboratively working together for for what is um, the best outcomes for for women and girls um, football going forward. Yeah, look, look, I agree, and it's funny we were um, we we're talking about this in. In terms of our boys academy and uh you know it's uh you know it's is the, the traveling and the distance is uh is often the big the big thing that's uh against it and so uh, but we're uh we're again now looking at a lot of the distance learning that we've been doing um because of the covid um 19 um pandemic is uh is there's maybe there's maybe some uh, some uh, solutions there that um, you know that you can be part of our academy um, and come up maybe once a week and then we can uh, give you some uh, distance learning and you can train with a yeah train with a with a with a local club and then you can do some distance learning um, as well so just just by doing things a little bit differently we, we've 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 learnt a lot through uh, um, through this last eight weeks to be maybe a little bit more flexible with our programs as well, and uh, not you know it sometimes uh, you know uh, it's ideal if you get players in and they're training with you four to five times a week and they're doing all the sessions, but sometimes that's not possible. So there's there's uh, the next best thing might be you come up once or twice a week and you and you and you do some remote some remote uh, some remote learning, but it, it keeps it keeps that link open, and uh, you know um, it, uh, it it maybe gives opportunities for some of the the more remote um, remote players to uh, to be part of our Melbourne Victory Academy teams and uh, and and keep that link open. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Um, I guess if there's no more questions, I guess G's still got, uh, oh, there's another one. Okay, so. Uh, for, for young girls who show some football talent, what advice would you give them on their football journey? Yeah, look, um, for me, for me, I'd just, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd just encourage them to just to keep, just to keep going, uh, uh, to to keep working hard, to uh, if it if it's a, if it's a passion of theirs, then to uh, 
to, uh, to to kind of follow their dream and to to go with their passion. Um, I'm I'm definitely one that um, believes in in hard work and nothing's ever achieved without hard work. Um, but um, look for uh, the I guess the the three things I'd say is uh, is 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 work hard. Um, uh, never never take no for an answer. Just keep keep knocking on the door. Uh, you know, stay just just to stay strong and resilient. Um, is if it's something that you, if you want, then you, you've got to you've got to got to keep going for it. And uh, um, probably the third thing was would be, um, yeah, take charge of your take charge and be in control of uh, of yourself and and your learning. Don't don't wait for other people to uh, to help you. Um, just get out there and, and and have a go at it. Um, there's going to be there's going to be play, uh, people along the way that are going to help you. Uh, your parents, your, your coaches, um, yeah, people are, are out there. They're they're there to facilitate and help you. But um, if you really want something, it's got to be coming. It's got to be driven from within. So you just go for it. And I say, if don't, if people tell you something that you don't want to hear, like you like you're not good enough, then don't listen to them. Just keep uh, keep believing in yourself and uh, and keep having a go because uh, uh, you can on most occasions you can you can achieve uh, whatever you whatever you want if you if you if you go hard enough at it All right, we might, um, Jeff. I might uh, yep. stop that there. Uh, okay, I can't see good. questions coming through. I just want to yeah. um, put uh, thank you massively for your time tonight. Um, obviously, um, a lot to take out of that, and um, hopefully, uh, the people involved, uh, you know, in the region, the Tri Valley, um, have really taken something out of that. Um, it's great to have. Um, yeah, a diverse range of questions as well around not just um, how to get the best for our females, but how to uh, engage people from all over the state. And I think um, uh, you know, if I'll just touch on what the community space we do, uh, I think we're, we're probably market leader in in the sense that we get out to everywhere in Victoria. Um, we're not just a Melbourne-based um, club where we do make an effort to make sure we're we're impacting communities throughout the state of Victoria, so that's probably um, not 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 trying to pump us up at all, but uh, just trying to say that we we are there for you guys to, to use it as a resource. So please um, make us aware of things that you're, you're trying to get out of it. So just want to say a massive thank you to Jeff again. Like obviously uh, giving up his time tonight. Um, uh, he's a busy man. He's got lots to do, um, and making sure he's getting the next next level. Of of players coming through as well. So just want to thank Jeff for his time again. And um, Jeff, I'm not sure if you're seeing all the thank yous coming up down the side, but- um, Yeah, yeah, I am actually. I appreciate good. it. Good, excellent. So uh, just- uh, look, uh, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, obviously uh, this area uh, means a lot to me as well. So uh, anytime I can come on and and, uh, and do this, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to uh, and uh, more than happy to, uh, to help us in any way that I can to uh, to, to um, keep the uh, female football um, sort of moving forward in that area as well. So, awesome. No Thank you, Jeff. Um, guys, we're going to probably uh, get to G's presentation on another night. I've seen a couple of people have dropped off, so I think we're um, just as Actually, just as we wrapped up, I think they might have forgotten the G's thing that was coming up. So what we're going to do is we've got another thing, another presentation coming up in for the Latrobe Valley, um, not far away. So uh, we'll probably just tag um, G's one onto that. So it's a, that one's a marketing um, presentation. So if you guys have got club um, members or committee members who are sort of on your social side and your, your website stuff, 
Uh, we're hoping to have a yeah a marketing sort of presentation similar to this um, available for your club. So what we'll do is we'll just add G's session uh, to that one, um, which again will add add a bit more value and bring some more people into it as well. So um, that will be in June. We're still working on a date. Um, there's a lot going on, obviously, in the A League at the moment with um, what's happening with football as is going on in in, in your uh, your clubs. So we'll um, we'll have a date out, and that'll be on that website, which I think we have shared with all of you. If you don't know the website, it is gomvfc.com.au, um, and there's a little hub there. So it's forward slash mvfc dash online dash training dash latrobe um so that's a good little resource for you guys to use for your clubs and that also sort of touches on um oh actually i'll chuck it in the chat quickly so you should all see that but this will also touch on some of that stuff that jeff was talking about um that was going to the academy kids so some of these um there you go should be in the chat there for you so copy that to your thing that was uh, that. That'll have some of the drills and stuff that the academy kids were using off-site. So a really good resource for you guys to use with your juniors and clubs as well, if you aren't already. Um, so that's going to be it for us tonight. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, stay in touch. I'll make sure this presentation will be available um, or should be available. It's being recorded, so uh, should be available for you to access. Um, so if you're interested in that, please send me an email or a text um, and I'll make sure I get that out to you to use or pass on to your club um, when uh, your club members. Thanks guys, um, all the best, stay safe and uh, good luck for the next few weeks as you, you start to come out of this time. Talk to you all soon. Thanks Tim, thanks yeah. Jeff. Really appreciate Thanks your time. Man. Thank you. That's good to talk, talk mate, we'll have to catch up, catch up soon. We shall, thanks mate. Take care, mate. See ya.